Jason Bowman Loves Cars. I'm Jason Bowman, and I love cars. Today I'm going to tell you my story of the Saab 900. The Saab 900 has flown under my radar for many years, but like the... Poor Saab. ...and other cars I previously couldn't begin to afford, Saabs are popping up in my Facebook Marketplace search under $10,000 and manual transmission. Now that the Saab 900s are in the realm of affordability, they are certainly worth a second look. Or in my case, a first look. The Saab 900 is a mid-sized car with front engine and front wheel drive. That all sounds pretty normal, although the four-cylinder engine is mounted longitudinally, which is a little odd. Here's where it all gets weird. The engine is also in there backwards. That's right, the accessory drive is facing the firewall. The transmission is actually a transaxle that's built into the engine's oil pan. The engine and transmission mercifully do not share lubrication. The consulting firm Ricardo suggested Saab should source the engines for their 9.9 model from Triumph. The Triumph-based engines continued in the 900s as well. Triumph supplied Saab with 50,000 engines per year for the 9.9. Saab had an exclusive use of the Triumph Slant 4 for four years. Triumph put it in the Dolomite, 1850, in 1972. In 1972, Saab started building the engines in-house at a facility in... Saab produced a turbocharged variant of the engine for the 1978 9.9 turbo. This engine was also installed in early 900 turbo models. The Saab B engine carried bore centers and bearings from the original Triumph design but was substantially redesigned. The B engine block was made of cast iron, and the cylinders were canted over at a 45 degree, creating a slant 4 configuration. The stroke was 78 millimeters and the bore was 90 millimeters. The Saab variant included a new cylinder head design with bigger valves and large ports, a new combustion chamber shape, and redesigned camshaft oiling system. Intake manifolds came in three flavors, fuel injection, single carb, and dual carb. Hi, I'm Jackie McLaren. Please remember to like and subscribe and comment to Jason Bowman Loves Cars. In 1981, the B engine was redesigned and given the H designation. This engine was used until 1993 and in 1994 cabriolets. So logic would dictate that the engine code would start in H, but they didn't. They all started in B. I think it is an evil Swedish conspiracy to confuse Canadian YouTubers striving to produce accurate content. Saab introduced the turbocharged version of the B engine in 1978 for the 99 turbo. Was instrumental in the development of the turbo engine. So much so that he earned the nickname Turbo Pete in Swedish and Mr. Turbo in English. Saab put together a dream team. An engineer gearhead race car driver that specialized in performance engines. Diesel turbo specialist. From the Saab. Truck division was also enlisted. Former Rolls-Royce apprentice Jeffrey Kershaw also joined the crew. He would go on to found the British tuning firm TurboTechnics Limited, which is celebrating its 40th anniversary. The turbo engine was tuned for torque rather than maximum power. Saab engineers actually pioneered the use of a modern turbo wastegate to control boost pressure. Another Saab invention was the use of exhaust manifold pressure to modulate the wastegate. This feature allowed boost to decrease slowly at higher RPMs. The benefit of all this engineering was a broad torque curve. The turbo's power was up 23% over the naturally aspirated version and torque rose 45%. Mechanical changes to the turbocharged B engine included reducing the compression ratio to 7.5 to 1 with specific pistons and adding sodium-filled exhaust valves. A revised camshaft profile and an engine oil cooler were also implemented. The party piece was a Garrett Air Research T3 turbocharger with oil-cooled bearings and a newly invented turbo wastegate. In 1981, the redesigned Saab H engine was installed in the 900. The H stood for high compression. The first H engine was called the B201. The B201 did not have a central shaft to power the distributor, oil, and coolant pump like the H did. The B201's distributor was directly driven by the camshaft and located at the front of the cylinder head. The B's integrated water pump was replaced with a separate unit mounted at the rear of the engine. Another Saab innovation was the development and use of the APC, Automatic Performance Control Boost Controller. Another Saab innovation was the development and use of the APC, Automatic Performance Control Boost Controller, implemented in 1982. This advanced system allowed the engine to run at the limits of engine knock. The system utilized a knock sensor located on the intake side of the engine block. If knocking was present, the APC system would decrease the boost by opening the wastegate. This system allowed the use of various octane fuels and made turbocharging the engine safer in general. B201 Specs Single carburetor, 99 horsepower at 5200 RPM. Dual carburetor, 107 horsepower at 5200 RPM. 
Bosch K Jetronic fuel injection 116 horsepower at 5500 rpm. Bosch K Jetronic fuel injection and turbocharged 143 horsepower at 5000 rpm. Bosch K Jetronic fuel injected, turbocharged, intercooled 153 horsepower at 5500 rpm. Saab added a 16 valve cylinder head with double overhead camshafts in 1984. They renamed the engine B202. The B202 had hydraulic valve lifters and preheated catalytic converter for reduced emissions. In 1991, Saab introduced the B212 engine. The B212 was a larger displacement 2.1 liter naturally aspirated with 16 valves and 140 horsepower. The intake manifold was also redesigned for greater flow. Some Saab 900 Special Edition cars came with a red box automatic performance control that upped the boost and increased the power. By 1983, Saab was leading the world having sold 100,000 turbo cars. In the beginning, Saab used oil-cooled T3 Garrett turbochargers. Water-cooled T3s were used from 1988 through 1990. Mitsubishi TE05 turbochargers were used in the 1990 US SPG models and everywhere else including the USA from 1991 on. The TE05 was also water-cooled being slightly smaller, it spooled faster than the Garrett T3. The Saab 900, like the Porsche 911, constantly evolved from the same basic platform. The 900's double wishbone suspension was an evolution of previous Saab models. The design provided excellent road feel and handling. The rear suspension was a typical front-wheel drive layout with a beam axle design, but with a few interesting innovations. It was located by a panhard rod, which is pretty conventional. Where it gets really interesting is the attachment points between the axle and the chassis, which were made up of two watts linkages at both ends of the rear axle. The lower control arms attach the axle to the chassis, while an upper link attaches to the top but faces forward. The lower control arms attach the axle to the chassis, while an upper link attaches at the top but faces toward the rear. Conventional four-link suspension designs have both lower and upper links facing forward. Early 900s did not have sway bars. They became standard on all trim levels by the late 1980s. The bar diameters front and rear were unchanged throughout the model run. Saab had always been a leader in vehicle safety. The 900 had a beefy windshield support structure and side impact beams decades before they were mandated. Aviation inspiration is a Saab automobile mainstay. The plane-like deeply curved windshield provided excellent driver visibility. An air-crafty curved dash placed all controls with an easy reach of the driver. The gauges were also lit from the front, continuing the cockpit theme. The engineers placed the gauges and controls in the dashboard based on how frequently they would be used and or their importance. The theory was the driver would only need to divert their eyes from the road for a very short time and only by a few degrees. The radio is also placed much higher than usual for this reason. The doors on 900 are also unusual. The bottom of the door wraps underneath the car. The design was said to keep corrosion at bay, not allowing debris to accumulate in the door jams. As a bonus, you don't get your pant legs dirty entering or exiting a Saab as there's no dirty rocker panels to rub them against. Saabs have a history of having excellent aerodynamics. The 900 was no exception with a slippery drag coefficient of 0.34. Saab built 908,810 900 series cars in five body styles. Two-door convertible, two-door notchback, four-door notchback, three-door hatchback, five-door hatch. Arguably, the Saabiest 900 Saab ever created was the Aero. The Aero name was trademarked by General Motors, so the name was only used in Scandinavia and Germany. It was renamed the Turbo 16S for the rest of Europe, and SPG standing for Special Performance Group in America. The SPG was the most powerful, sportiest 900 available in America between 1985 and 1991. The most popular 900 body style was the three-door hatchback, so this body style was chosen for the SPG. The SPGs had a special body kit that Saab engineers developed consisting of a deeper front air dam and fender lip extensions and front and rear bumper extensions. Unlike many body kits, the Saab's aero enhancements were wind tunnel tested. This combination of parts reduced the car's drag co-efficiency by 5%. The SPGs used the turbo's standard rear spoiler and new flush 3-spoke 15 by 55 inch alloy wheels. Front and rear anti-roll bars were also standard. The SPG option package included limited badging, power sunroof, fog lamps, leather upholstery, in addition to their performance modifications and aero enhancements. Standard equipment included four speaker set stereo, heated front seats, cruise control, air conditioning, power windows, and central locking. The 1985 SPG was offered in black paint with satin black lower panels with Sierra tan leather. The black lower panels were short-lived and were changed to contrasting anthracite, the color they would remain until the end of the SPG production. For 1986 and 1987, the SPG had an Edwardian grey metallic paint over buffalo grey leather. 
High mounted stop lamp in the hatch glass and fender mounted side marker repeaters were safety improvements made to all 900s this year. SPGs and regular turbos got vented front disc brakes to replace previous solid units. Saab gave the 900 range a facelift in 1987, fitting a chrome grille and flush composite headlamps. The SPG was boosted by 5 horsepower and 7 foot pounds of torque over the regular 900 with a premium fuel calibrated APC system. Lowering springs were added, lowering the car 20 millimeters in the front and 10 millimeters in the rear. The 1988 turbocharged 900 received an improved water and oil cooled turbo there, previously just oil cooled. The brakes were upgraded to the 9000 style braking system. The new system had floating calipers and rear acting mechanical handbrake. The Crazy Swedes previously had the parking brake mechanism acting on the front brakes. The SBG got wider black fender flares to cover the new hub brake wheel package. 1989 upgrades included standard leather wrap steering wheel and gear shift boot. All 900s got those stupid motorized seatbelts. <laughs> Thankfully, backdating them to manual seatbelts is a bolt-in affair if you get the headliner, visors, A and B pillar trim, etc. from a parts car. The 1990-900s bin their In motorized the seatbelts and a driver's side airbag was added. The SPG was updated with a leather wrap steering wheel. Braking performance was also enhanced with an anti-lock braking system while an 18-gallon gas tank replaced the 16.6-gallon .6 unit, which improved its ability to go. The SPG earned the title of the most powerful Saab to ever be offered in America with the addition of a recalibrated APC, quick spooling Mitsubishi TE05 charger. Power was bumped to 175 horsepower at 5500 RPM and 195 foot-pounds of torque at 3000 RPM. The Guardian Grey paint was replaced with Talladega Red. The last year of SPG was treated to a select number of changes. These changes included barrel green paint color, a small turbo badge on the grill, and 9,000 front seats. The new color was the most popular in 1991, with 109 SPGs so painted. There were also 105 black SPGs and 40 Talladega red cars, all featuring buffalo gray interiors. Saab exported 7,625 SPGs to America between 1985 and 1991. 1991 was not the end of high-performance classic 900s, though. 314 1993 900 Turbo Commemorative Edition hatchbacks and 51994 Commemorative... <laughs> 1991 wasn't the end of high performance classic 900s though. 314 1993 900 turbo commemorative edition hatchbacks and 500 1994 commemorative edition convertibles were also imported into the states. Both commemorative editions made 185 horsepower and 201 foot pounds of torque thanks to their red box APC, 40.61 psi fuel pressure regulator, and a performance tuned distributor. Thankfully, all the C's were 5-speed manuals, saving car enthusiasts a weekend on their back in the driveway to right or wrong. Stock performance. Motor Week tested a 1985 Saab 900 16 valve turbo and it ran the quarter mile in 16.4 seconds at 85 miles per hour. That's almost two seconds quicker than the last 900 turbo we tested. Aftermarket performance. The aftermarket performance for the Saab 900s is still strong. This segment in my video is usually right in my wheelhouse, having been a parts person for 30 years, many of those years at a speed shop. But, I have to say I learned something new doing this video. One of the keys to Saab 900 performance is a custom-tuned automatic performance control. The APC is an electronic turbo boost control system that adjusts maximum boost pressure as a function of engine knock, detonation, and RPM. Performance calibrated units are a common upgrade. Aftermarket fuel chips for recalibrating the Bosch fuel management system are also popular. Turbo upgrades are commonplace. Lumpier cams are always a good upgrade. Cat back exhaust systems are available. Racing! <laughs> 900s are often autocrossed. are often road raced. The Garrett turbocharger causes the driver quite a lot of pressure on the spine. The Saab has a maximum torque of 500 newton meters, and due to the weight of the front engine, this is locked to the tarmac by friction. 900s have a rich rally heritage. Oh, 
odds are often drag raced. At least one Saab 900 was entered in a soapbox derby race. The best use of a Saab 900 is to get it on a freeway and let it stretch its legs. Wait, what was that? Holy crap, what was that? Holy crap, another jackalope sighting! Buying a Saab 900. There are a few things you need to look out for when it comes to these cars. Despite being engineered for Scandinavian winters, the 900s are susceptible to the dreaded tin worm. Engine. A well-maintained engine can exceed 400,000 miles without an overhaul. Inspect the engine for oil leaks. Common areas are the timing cover seal and the valve cover. The water pump should also be inspected for leaks. The timing chain requires replacement about every 125,000 miles. The 16 valve can be done in the car while the 8 valve is officially an engine out job. The turbochargers are known to last over 200,000 miles. Blue smoke when the engine is revved or rattling are clues to a failing turbo. The waste cake can stick and shut causing an overboost situation. The Bosch injection system is very reliable. Saab's automatic performance control can fail resulting in poor performance or pre-detonation. Transmission The transmissions are known to last 190,000 miles if you shift carefully but can fail much sooner if you are abusive. Check for rattles and bearing noise and jumping out of gear, particularly reverse. Oddly, my go-to Haggerty doesn't recognize the Saab 900 as a classic yet. Classic and sports car claims a turbo hatchback is worth 11900 in show quality, $5,300 in average condition, and $1,300 in need of restoration. Two- or four-door sedans are said to be 20% cheaper than three- and five-door hatchbacks. They also claim a convertible in show quality is worth $17,200. In average condition, they are worth $9,250. For restoration candidates, are worth $2,650. I couldn't find any future value predictions, but I assume the 900 will appreciate over time. So get yours now and prevent any sob stories later. Thanks for watching Jason Bowman Loves Cars and my story of the Saab 900. Please remember to like and subscribe.